G'day everyone, I'm Dave, and today we'll be looking at tearing down a half sheet sander. There's various different sanders, there's half sheet, quarter sheet, there's random orbital, orbital, and how they get their name is pretty well, most cases, especially for the half sheet and quarter sheet, is actually the size of the paper. To tear down one of these sanders, whether it's quarter sheet or half sheet, they're pretty well always the same. The screws are located at the top. And we'll just remove each one a little bit. Once you loosen up all the screws a little bit, we'll just check, make sure we've got a nice gap all the way around and everything's free and nothing's stuck. So we know we can continue on opening it up. So we'll just open this up, starting at the handle and we'll remove that screw completely. Then we'll go into our longer screws. With those, you keep turning until you basically start hearing a clicking, which means the thread is fully out. And then you can just grab it and pull it out. And we can see they're quite long. They go all the way to the base. Now we'll just continue on with each one of these top screws. And there we go. Got it fully out. Now we can pull the top off. There at the very top is actually your fan mechanism which is blowing all the sawdust out. And we can see actually there's still a lot of sawdust down here in the windings. So with this one here, we just pull, we can just pull the switch out and the connector for the cord. This particular older model actually has a special cord that locks in. Of course, if you don't have that, you can actually track down the part for a replacement of the cord, or you can actually just cut into this and replace it with a normal hardwired cord. So we'll remove the handle portion, which just lifts up. And we can remove that, set that aside. And then we can lift up the main body and get to your electric motor. So here in the center, of course, we have our armature. There's our commutator. And the commutator, of course, simple way to remember it, communicates power from the brushes into the windings. So inside we've got our stator, it's static, which is your external coil. And then down here, we have our one and our second brush that actually transfers the power that's coming in through the commutator, through each one of these pads to the matching winding to create your internal magnetics. So the armature we just grab and we can just wiggle a little bit and pull it right out. And within the armature, you have a supporting mechanism and we can just pull that right out of there. And then inside on this particular one actually is just a steel bushing. So we can set that armature aside and we can get into the base section where you see our fan. And if I spin the fan, you'll actually see it's offset, which is what creates the vibration. So as that motor spins, because of the offset, this entire base will spin around. And to get into this portion, if we actually need to replace that, then we have to remove the base itself. With the base, you have the foam pad underneath. Quite often, sometimes the screws are underneath here. And if you're doing one of these, it's always good, of course, to pull all that off because you want to replace it anyways. So we'll just rip that all off. So if you're not looking at replacing your pad, uh, it's always good to start at the top and see if you have any kind of hidden covers or a sticker that you can feel, see if you can see in depressions. And then we can just pop those right out and then we can see the screws right down here at the very bottom of each one of these holes so we'll just get our screwdriver and pull out those screws and again if you don't want to you don't want to replace the rubber don't take it off uh, start obviously looking for the top first but i find with these things if i'm going to do any kind of effort it's worth replacing those pads they're quite inexpensive you'll be able to remove that cover fully. And then we're down into the base. Here we have our locking mechanism for our sandpaper at both sides. And then we have our spinning flywheel. We can see it's offset. And in this case as well, we have more blades to actually create a bit more cooling and try to blow the dirt away. 
So with the last part here, that's just actually a press fit. Normally you can come in with a bearing puller. This bearing puller would just slide underneath. In this case, and of course the shaft goes down and locks in, and pulls it out. In this case, we don't have quite enough room. We can either find a slimmer bearing puller or cut into the plastic a little bit so we can come in from the proper sides. In this case, since we're just doing a complete teardown, what I'm gonna do is just come around with a screwdriver at each spot, give a little bit of pressure, not much, just to try to loosen it up a little bit. And then I'll grab that and see if I can just, and there we go, wiggle it right up and out. And we can see here the shaft, if you look closely, these holes in here are part of the balancing. As they spin this, they'll remove metal. The easiest way is either add or remove, and it's easier to remove. And they just drill a little bit until they get just the absolute perfect balance, such that we will get that vibration effect when we spin it. And the weight will keep everything properly balanced, so we're not getting excessive force up the shaft. Hopefully, this gives you a pretty simple idea of what's inside a half sheet sander. And really, a quarter sheet or pretty well anything else, it's all the same. Any kind of vibrating sander basically has some kind of offset and a weight. And other than that, they're all identical. For more tools, tips, tricks, and teardowns, please subscribe and watch our other videos. And thanks for watching.